The US President Donald Trump followed through on his pledge to impose stiff tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. Trump, however, excluded Canada and Mexico and left the door open to spare other countries on the basis of national security. The tariffs have been set at 25% for steel and 10% for aluminum and will come into effect in 15 days. Here's what Donald Trump had to say about his latest measure. We have to protect and build our steel and aluminum industries while at the same time showing great flexibility and cooperation toward those that are really friends of ours, both on a trade basis and a military basis. We're going to be doing a reciprocal tax program at some point so that if China is going to charge us 25 percent or if India is going to charge us 75 percent and we charge them nothing, if they're at 50 or they're at 75 or they're at 25, we're going to be at those same numbers. It's called reciprocal. It's a mirror tax. So they charge us 50, we charge them 50. Right now, they'll charge us 50, we charge them nothing. Doesn't work. Well, is this the start of something serious? Or will this be cushioned? Let's talk, and, and the impact thereof, of course, even if it becomes serious. Seth Freeman, Senior Managing Director at EM Capital Management, joins us on the show. Seth, good morning. Thanks for joining us this early in the morning. Really appreciate your accommodating this request. Um, what, what could the implications uh, of, of such a move be uh, on how asset classes perceive it? I, I think it's difficult to preempt whether this will scale up to a full-blown trade war or no. But from whatever little we've gotten till now, and I know, boy, were we prepared for it. Having said that, now that the action has happened, how do different asset classes view this? Well, it, it's fundamentally inflationary. And um, it should be also expected to increase interest rates. So, um, you know, investors can use that as a guide. Whether or not, like you mentioned, we're going to see a real trade war is yet to be seen. You know, if, if you look at futures, you look at the opening markets today, it looks like there's more, more concern or pos positive ebullience virtually in terms of this announcement about a potential meeting with North Korea, uh, frankly. So it, it would be different if we hadn't had that announcement coupled with the, um, the new tariffs, we could maybe get a little bit better view. But uh, this, is go this should affect um, earnings uh, negatively uh, for many companies. Mm. Seth, I, I think you make a, make a valid point, and that's the fear, right? Next week, we will not have similar announcements, and there is an outside chance mm -hmm. that other economies might go out and do some bit of reciprocation, even if it is token in nature, but it will be headline-grabbing. How? I mean, how, what, what does one make of that action then? Because it's one thing to be prepared for an activity. It's quite another to be experiencing that in the midst of that. How do you think the next few days uh, shape up if the other large economies do follow suit in reciprocation? Well, there's really two aspects uh, to, this quest the, to this question. You know, I thought it was pretty brilliant when uh, the EU came out and they said, well, you know, you impose tariffs and we're going to go after uh, Harley Davidson's and Bourbon, which specifically targets uh, uh, members of the Congress uh, from those states especially the Speaker of the House coming from Wisconsin, where Harley-Davidson's are made and, and uh, you know, the South, uh, where bourbon comes from. So that was kind of brilliant. The, I think the real problem isn't so much what might happen in terms of the response from Europe, but actually the response from the United States. It, it appears that this announcement from President Trump was... Um, not done in a lot of consultation with his experts. And so um, who's to say that our response is going to represent the input of experts? And th this is a very complicated, it's, it's not a, a binary kind of situation. Why, 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 why would you say that, Seth? I mean, we knew that in because Donald Trump was going ahead with this announcement, we already had Cohn stepping down as well. So I presume that he would have had enough interactions with people that he thought were important enough to have interactions with and gone ahead 
and, and, and sign this. And therefore, the fear that if indeed there is reciprocation, which there well could be because Japan has mentioned that, EU has already mentioned that, mm -hmm. but post the action, China has said in probably the strongest language that they've used till now that they will have to take cognizance of this, that there could be a bit of to and fro. Well, I'm sure there were conversations, but it certainly wasn't broad. And, and we're certainly seeing the reaction uh, from Congress and numerous economists have come out and said that this was a terrible idea. So it's quite clear that there wasn't an extensive consultation and that, uh, you know, this, this was uh, something really in terms of timing, something that came out of, out of the blue. Trump, of course, has been talking about his concerns about dumping and being abused by foreign uh, exporters and so forth for decades. Um, in, in terms of um, its impact uh, going forward, you know, I think the Treasury Sec, uh, the, uh, I think Cohen as the advisor was, um, you know, frustrated for a variety of, of reasons uh, that this was probably just the icing on the cake.